Good morning, KW Milwaukee, on a beautiful, uh, what is today, the 15th? Here, I'll give you a little story. Uh, today's all about perspective, okay? And it's actually going to be probably pretty short and sweet, but I want to change the narrative in way that, the way in which that we're looking at the current market of the moment, Okay. But I'm going to give you a story about perspective as I woke up this morning at five and my kids came downstairs and they thought it was Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Every day is not Christmas in our household. But it was a useful innocence of that that made me say, you know, a lot of people will bitch about the weather or say this, that, and the other. And God, I fucking hate you guys. I know why you're on here. All right, so there's a reason why today's going to be short. Fuck. All right. But there was a youthful innocence to that comment and keeping life in perspective in terms of positivity and joy and waking up and saying, yeah, it's a Tuesday. I got to go to school. Like, or yeah, it's a Tuesday, I got to go to work. Or yeah, I have to do 30 showings today. Or I got to deal with this stupid ass client who thinks their house is overpriced and they don't want to accept the offers on the table. Whatever it may be, right? Perspective is super important. And I loved, I loved the comment this morning that like, it's snowing, it should be Christmas. And they're excited, right? So wake up with joy. I'm going to fly through this because I hate you guys. Oh, all right. I'm going to go fast. October cappers. If I don't feel like I'm celebrating you enough or mentioning enough about you, it's because I'm a little short of breath this morning. Um, first up out in Lake Country, Christy Weber, congrats on capping in the month of October. Incredibly proud of you. Congrats on your success in a really difficult environment with tough headwinds. Abby Wall, one of the most intentional and purposeful people I know. Talk about someone who's 2X, 3X their business. Uh, just a great human. I love her. She's awesome. Jackie Spilius, congrats on capping in the month of October. Really fun energy. Ton, ton of fun person to be around. Ah, gosh, I hate you guys. Kristen Schlingman, I hope your kids are having a blast in, in Italy this year as they study abroad. Uh, you've been a great sounding board for me, always giving me very honest and direct feedback. I appreciate it. Newbie? Newbie, there's not much else to say. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> You got it, you got it. Doreen Drummel, again, just great people. I love you, Doreen. Always incredibly positive, a ton of energy. It's great. <laughs> Maggie Drain, I aspire for her chaos. Okay. If you don't know, Maggie has five kids, they live three doors down from us. Uh, we embrace each other's chaos every day. I love it. It's a ton of fun. So, Steph, I'm flipping it to you. I <laughs> uh, guess who does not want to do a compliance update right now? Oh. <laughs> um, I'm going to fly through this too, you guys. Um, I'm going to continue on the theme of um, going over the contract deadlines and just discarding some myths around um, around uh, some misconceptions that people have around the uh, around the deadlines and the contract. So today I'm going to go on to talk about the acceptance and binding acceptance deadline, um, what it means when acceptance happens. So um, acceptance occurs when all buyers and sellers have signed one copy of the offer or separate but identical copy of the offer. 
It's binding when the accepted offer is delivered back to the buyer on or before the date on line 28. So let's say you have a seller who has accepted an offer, but it has not been delivered back by the um, by the listing agent or the buyer agent um, to that uh, preferred delivery method or the agreed upon delivery method. Um, it is not binding it until it has been delivered back. So the offer may be withdrawn prior to delivery of an accepted offer. A buyer can rescind orally. Um, it does not have to be in writing. Someone can get on the phone right away and make that phone call. And that's what I would suggest. And that's what Joni would suggest. Um, and then, um, but follow up in writing right after you make that phone call. So an oral withdrawal should be followed up with a written confirmation of when the buyer withdrew and the method used. Okay, next slide. <laughs> I'm going to continue on with myths around binding acceptance. So the binding acceptance date does not mean a response date. So I think this is key for communicating this to our buyers when we're going over our buyer consultations or when we are um, going off over an offer to purchase. Um, so the seller's options are always the same um, when they receive an offer. They can accept the offer and deliver it back by the binding acceptance date to make it binding. Um, they can counter the offer, which can be done prior to the binding acceptance date, if that's when it happens to be drafted and delivered. Um, but it may also may be done after a binding acceptance date. A counter offer does not have to be delivered prior to the binding acceptance date named on line 28. Um, and another option that the seller has, of course, is to reject the offer. And the fourth option is that the seller may ignore the offer altogether. No response is a response in of itself. Um, so I'm just going to highlight again the counter offer um, note here that again, it's it doesn't hold the seller to respond in any sort of form um, just because that binding acceptance date um, has been named on line 28. So um, continuing on. So if the seller delivers the accepted offer back after the expiration of the offer, so after that binding acceptance date has come and gone, then the buyer has to essentially accept the seller's acceptance. I put that in quotes. So that's how I explain it um, when, when we're going through training. So if the seller accepts the offer after the binding acceptance deadline and it is delivered back, uh, then the binding acceptance date should be stricken, must be stricken, and a new date should be added and all parties should initial acknowledging the new date. So um, if that offer is delivered back, then um, after the binding acceptance, then the, then the buyer again, essentially has to accept that acceptance. Last one. So um, an extension of a binding acceptance may be done by the buyer if it has been communicated that the seller will not be able to make a decision about the offer by that time. So you know, going through your correspondence with the listing agent, the listing agent might communicate, I, you know, we're just not going to be able to respond by that time. Um, can you extend the binding acceptance date? And, and a buyer absolutely can. So in order to extend the binding acceptance date, you're going to use a counteroffer form. Um, and this is where I want there to be some clarification. So the seller, once they receive that counteroffer with that new binding acceptance date um, named, does not sign the counter offer as a form of acknowledgement. There's a myth around, the, um, there's a misconception that uh, the seller should sign that counter offer form as acknowledgement. They do not. Um, the delivery of the counter offer with the new binding acceptance state is what changes the binding acceptance state, just the delivery in of itself. Um, so that seller would only sign the counter offer if it is their intent to accept the whole offer. So this is where I want some uh, clarification made. All right, that's all I got for binding acceptance dates. Um, this, I, you know, you guys have been on top of getting your GMAR dues and CE credits and um, CE certificates, excuse me, um, and your uh, proof that you have paid and renewed your license with the DSPS. Thank you, continue to do a great job. Um, we are one month away. Um, so just a friendly reminder, just get it in, continuing education due December 14th. That's all I got. Guys, I, one of the things I would challenge you with is I know I sound like a brokered record when I say this. A lot of people think that like we do these updates because, you know, we, you know, 
it's a lot of new people who are missing things. Truth is, it's a lot of experienced people who are missing it. A thousand percent. I, yeah. I just want to say we don't bring these to the greater good because, you know, it's just a few people doing it. It's it's a trend. It's a trend. The other thing is you wouldn't believe some of the stuff we see. I'll give you an example. Someone last week decided to cash an earnest money check into their personal account. Oh, Not a good thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Molitor. <laughs> my mother thought he he had to pay for that new kitchen somehow. <laughs> so when we bring this stuff up, it's because we have moments where we're like, what? <laughs> so uh, just word to the wise, if you get an earnest money check written out in your personal name, don't cash it. Okay. All right. Training and events. Upcoming. Thanks, Steph. Uh, reminder. New location, Mad Men Holiday Party theme, uh, December 2nd, okay, 6 to 11 p.m. at Birch over in Tosa. Very centrally located for the group. As a reminder, we had to move the location because we forgot or didn't realize there was a sold-out Bucks game that night and there would be no parking downtown. So we moved it over to Birch. Birch is also attached to uh, Camp Bar Tosa, and Camp Bar this year will be Santa Camp. And we have the whole thing booked for the private evening for our group across KW Milwaukee. So uh, encourage you to show up. It's a great event, great party. A um, couple upcoming things from a November training calendar. Uh, just so you guys know, next week, there's no team meeting on Tuesday. Uh, and then we will be closing the offices at noon on the 23rd to give our teams the opportunity to, st to start heading to where they need to head for the Thanksgiving weekend. And then our offices are also closed on Friday, the 25th. We will be back for team meeting on the 29th. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. Um, and then I had, oh, and then lastly is a reminder on bold tomorrow. Uh, we have a new location. We'll be inside the zoo. When you show up, tell them you're here for Keller Williams Bold. You'd go in through you normal, like, like you normally would if you're going to the zoo. Okay. Oh, it's that, that entrance right before ours. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the entrance right that, before. Yeah, you're going to a, a facility called the Peck Pavilion. They host a lot of events there if you've been there before. Uh, one other thing I just want to note. Um, we're 50% of the way through Bold. Okay. I know there's a 50% wall. People start hitting a wall at this point. There's a purpose and reason why we changed the venues for tomorrow to try and bring a little different energy. Second thing is, I heard the feedback, I saw it. I thought Dennis was a little off. So I called him yesterday and I said, hey, Dennis, like just the energy seemed to just a tad off. You, you good? And he had a death in the family the day before. Oh, so <clears throat> just wanted to give you a heads up as you see him like teaching bold for seven weeks for six hours at a shot for 150 people takes a lot of energy. And so make sure that you're bringing the energy because it takes a lot to do that. And it takes a lot of grace. Give someone grace as they're going through it. Sound good? Cool. All right. What to make of the market of the moment? Here's what I'd tell you. Since March, we've been talking about a potential pendulum swinging. And we said, what happens gradually, all of a sudden turns suddenly, right? And I think you're now starting to feel that August, September, October, okay? We've been talking about it for months and I wanna change your perspective on the market, okay? Because what I don't want you hearing and what I don't want you consuming as it relates to what is shared on social media, what is talked about in the news and this, that, and the other is, oh my God, the world is burning. Mm -hmm. Because what I know what will happen is, is if you believe that, it will create inaction for you and your businesses, okay? So I'm gonna share with you a little perspective as to what we've been talking about, okay? October, looking at lead metrics, listings taken units were down 19%, contracts written on the buyer side were down 33. This is what we've been talking about, okay? Now, there's three metrics on this screen and I'm just gonna point you to the yellow box. For sale inventory this year versus last year was down 22%. Units that went under contract down 34%, 33-34%, and new listings down 18 to 19%, like I just brought up. Okay. Here's my concern. That's the only thing you're hearing. 
My concern is that's the only thing you're hearing. And so it's creating a sense of pause for you or a little bit of panic. And I want you to be at peace. Okay. Also, I'll show you this. And then I'm going to flip to the perspective. Right now, I'm trying to share all y'all the bad news because I want to finish with a good taste in your mouth. Right. And good news. North America, this is showing time activity across North America. This is the showing time activity across Wisconsin. Okay. Good news is the demand remains pr relatively pretty healthy in the state of Wisconsin. We're in a very fortunate position, okay? And when you compare it, we're following very similar trends to the national trends. We, aren't just feel we just aren't feeling it as much as other locations in metropolitan areas, okay? Now, here's where I'm going to start to change your perspective on a few things, okay? As you talk to your clients, and I've I, I believe this is happening. I mean, I know this is happening because the continued shortage of inventory. Average price points were up on closed business, right? This isn't on new listings. On closed business, average was up 11% this October versus last October. And the medium was up 6%, okay? Price per square foot. Sold units were up 11%. New inventory was up 20% this year versus last year. Now, here's my one concern. Listing agents, we have to right size expectations with our clients. Well, how do I know this? Expired listings right now are going through the roof. And if you look here, new listing inventory is up 21% on a price per square foot, but yet units that are going under contract are only up 2%. So we need to make sure that we're sharpening our pencils and having right sized expectations with our sellers in order for us to secure the listing and successfully sell the listing, right? Units under contract only up 2% when new listings up 20%. That's imbalanced, okay? As it, as it relates to price per square foot. Now, perspective is important to maintain. And here's where I would challenge you as you look ahead and move forward into 2023. Consider this in the last 90 days. 7,306. Anybody know what it is? Nope. New listings. There were 7,306 new listings that came to the market in the last 90 days. I don't care about percentages. That's still a lot of units. Okay. They're either working with you or they're working with someone else. Okay. 5,632. <laughs> units under contract. Okay, there were 5,632 buyers that went under contract in the last 90 days. Again, think about perspective of where it is within your business. Okay. And how many of those buyers did you put under contract in the last 90 days? 6,570 closed units. There were 6,570 closed units in the last 90 days. Okay. Don't pay it to what is in your RAS, and I'll give a shout out to Kerry Oberbrunner, Sarah's brother. He talks a lot about what's in your RAS, what goes between your two ears. And what goes between your two ears is ultimately what you believe will happen, right? And if all you're listening to is the market's down 30%, the market's down 30%, the market's down 30%, the sky is falling, what's going to happen to your business? Your confidence will tank and it will show up with your clients. But if you come to the table and you think every day is Christmas that it snows and you show up and you're like, huh, it's snowing, it must be Christmas. And you come off positively radiant and super confident in your abilities, you will be perfectly fine heading into the market of the moment as we look down the spring of 23. Make sense? Now, one last thing I'll share with you. Last week, Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, um, really, really well-respected individual, uh, really, really sharp dude. Um, he adjusted his forecasts and shared forecasts as it relates to this year and then moving on to next year and then 2024. And he's expecting, this is national data, right? National data that he's expecting this year to finish down 15% versus prior year with home price appreciation up 10%, um, up 10%, okay? 2023, which I thought was just based on what everything I've been hearing was a little bit expecting a bit more of a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. He's only predicting a down 7%. Mm -hmm. Okay. A down 7% is 
coming off of the last five year run that we've had actually is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, down 7% is probably coming in and around what we did in 18 or 19. And those are great years, right? Correct, correct. And price appreciation should hover, slight growth. Right. And they're predicting interest rates will maintain around six to seven percent. And then 2024, looking out in two years, he's projecting a big rebound in 2024. He, he really thinks that the, the recession that we're about to enter into and it's happening. Right. Like, I don't know if you guys heard the news yesterday ahead of the Christmas season. Amazon's laying off 10,000 people. FedEx ahead of the Christmas season is laying off. I don't know. 13% of its workforce or something. I mean, it's, it's significant numbers, but the, the rebound to it should be pretty drastic in terms of how quickly it comes back. A lot of factors in that prediction, but I appreciated his sense of positivity and realism as it relates to what we're seeing. So as you go ahead, I would challenge you to think about these numbers and focus on controlling your units and controlling your activities to earn the business that you desire. Don't worry about the trends in the business, right? And put your head down and keep doing your job, right? 2X and 3X, 2X your database, 3X your activities, and you'll be totally fine. Last thing I'll share with you, and I was just looking at a few data points, okay? This is as of this morning, Keller Williams across all brands right now is number one in Southeastern Wisconsin in total market share. But I think that's not what's really important to me, okay? What's really important is this. There's three facts I'd share with you. You guys, because this data is nothing to do with KW. It has everything to do with the conglomerate of the data that you guys do and the community that you have and the community that you continue to sharpen together, okay? Is you list and sell homes faster than any other brand within the top 10. Average days on market is 20 days on market, considerably faster than any other brand within the top 10. You also work at price points that are 19% higher than the market average, which is number two in the Metro MLS of the top 10 and number one in the top six. Compass is the only one higher at 579, okay? But 19% higher than the market average is considerable. So you're selling home, listing and selling homes faster than the market, working in a price point that's basically 20% higher, okay? You are surrounded by incredible professionals who are productive. Don't forget that, okay? And it's the only brokerage brand growing in the top six. So I share with you that not because of number one is important by any means, but I share with you that in the perspective of those that you surround yourself with matters, those that you put yourself in the environment with matters, and those in which that you will go through this next phase of the market with together matters. And it's, I'll share with you one last story. Last week, we had an opportunity to, um, Mandy and I went to a, a speech downtown um, all around like today's workforce. How do you lead through people? What is it that today's workforce values? You know, basically the theme of the conference was like talent, 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 talent. How do you attract and retain great talent? Had nothing to do with real estate, by the way, nothing. And um, they said, it's fascinating. More and more people are yearning, you know, younger ages are yearning to be in the office and they're yearning to build a sense of community and they're yearning to work with others to get through and navigating their careers. And the rate at which people are coming back into the offices has accelerated significantly in the last three to six months. And they talked about um, how the chaos within capital markets and the chaos with geopolitical conflicts and the chaos is actually what's creating a, a, a greater sense or yearning for people to be a part of a community. And so, again, the reason why I share these numbers with you isn't to say like, oh, look at us and look at what we're doing. It's my point is, is like the story I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. You know, if you put a flower and it doesn't bloom, is it the flower or is it the environment? And if you put a flower in an environment and it blooms and it turns into a beautiful flower, did you cultivate the right environment for that flower to do what it needed to do to shine bright, right? And so I commend you guys for what you're doing despite the headwinds within the market. Um, and that's my market of the moment for you. There's another slide in there. I accidentally go back in. I dropped it in. 
Providence. So now, this is where I don't know what's happening. Yeah, there's a slide in there. Okay. <laughs> so I thought we'd be doing this at the end of the meeting. We could sneak something in on him. But for those who can't see, this is a packed house in North Shore. Um, last week, you talked a lot about extreme ownership and you get very passionate, which we all love. And Julia actually shared um, a clip from your team meeting with Echelon and they have a video for you. Wishing you a happy birthday. So you can play this. Or can you play that? <laughs> Oop. Or a tech company. Are you in the Zoom? Oh. <laughs> For the 112 people on the call and the other two rooms that are here, I have no idea what's going on. So thank <laughs> you. Doing myself. Oh, um, hold on. I think you have to, uh, here, just plug in. <laughs> hmm? Hey, Charlie, this is Corey Mize. I'm a member of the Echelon front team. I actually was a student training manager. And your team at Keller Williams actually reached out to us and said that you celebrated your birthday this weekend. And they wanted to honor you um, in a special way because you are such a inspiration. And they actually sent us a video where we walked through um, your two phase from the phase. The way everyone, everyone showed up in masses today to celebrate you just shows how much you mean to all of us. And we wanted to wish you a very happy birthday.
Um, hold on. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now. I'm a member of the Echelon Front Team. I'm actually a sustainment training manager. And guys, here's the I don't know. Let's go. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, in August, I celebrated five years of doing this. And uh, you know, I was on a path where I kind of knew what I was going to do. You know, I'll, actually, I'll tell you a little story. My mom can totally validate this. Oh, sorry. When I, uh, when I was a kid, it tells you about the power of positive affirmations. Like. I used to tell my mom, oh, thanks. I said, hey, I'm going to be the CEO of Miller Brewing Company someday. Like that was my mission in life. And I spent 10 years chasing that, right? And it was a great run there. I had a lot of fun. Um, was very fortunate to have a lot of success. And uh, and then perspective changed. I had kids and started a family. And I'll tell you, uh, moving to do this to serve you, and that's really what my job is, is to serve you, has been the most rewarding decision, probably outside of marrying Megan, of my life and I wake up every day with a, a passion for life to walk in here and I get energized by the people in this room and the people on the zoom and the people in the other rooms and I love it and you know um, I do it because I love our community that we've created and continue to create. And it's not perfect. Like, I get it. There's a, there's a lot of things that we're trying to do and it's like, you know, um, but it's probably the professionally the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And people ask me, I run into Miller people all the time and they say, hey, do you ever regret it? Do you ever regret it? And I said, not once. It's the best thing I've ever done. And it's because of the people we get to work with. Uh, and I love, I mean, I truly love serving you. It's, it's besides raising kids, probably the greatest honor of my life that you, that you trust me <laughs> for all your children. <laughs> trust me <laughs> that you trust us with your business. And that's not lost on me because I tell our teams every single day, what keeps me up at night is Everybody here has a choice and you vote with your own two feet. And if we're doing what we do to serve you at the highest level, we retain great people and we attract great talent. And if we don't, we have turnover and that's totally on us. But I just want to say thank you. I, um, it really has been an honor and a privilege and uh, thank you for showing up uh, today. It, it, you know, gifts are one thing, but I value time and loyalty as probably the two most important factors in my life. Um, and thanks for showing up.